The prickly pear cactus is a common member of the flora in many arid and semi-arid regions of the western U.S. These prickly pears I film while turkey hunting in west central Texas. The fruits, flowers, and pads are all edible. The large mature pads are tough and fibrous, but the young tender pads are delicious and nutritious. But to render the young pads edible, we must first get past their formidable defenses. Prickly pears have two types of spines that form a double layer of defense. First, they have large, long spikes that can pierce clothing, shoes, and skin. But they also have much smaller, finer, and more numerous hair-like spines that are almost invisible. The finer spines tend to be much more troublesome as they are very difficult to see once embedded in your skin. Despite this, ancient people used prickly pear very heavily for food. To collect the young pads, I use a stick to bend the pad over. Then I cut the base with a sharp flint flake. This plentiful food source is easy and quick to gather, and it's easy to see why the ancient Indians relied so heavily on the prickly pear for food. Ancient human feces, called coprolites, were found in caves close to where I was hunting. An analysis revealed that prickly pear was a very important food source for prehistoric people. The prickly pear fibers and skins were found in 70% of the human coprolites, suggesting they were eaten daily. After the pads are cut, I handle them with a stick to avoid getting the irritating spines in my skin. In less than a minute, I've harvested a nutritious meal of prickly pear pads. The small bumps where the spines grow must be removed, so I carefully cut them off using the sharp flint flake. It's likely ancient hunter-gatherers did the same thing. But be sure to get every one of the bumps. Prickly pears are not forgiving to foragers who aren't thorough, ancient or modern. After the bumps are removed, scrape the pad with a knife or flint flake to remove any of the tiny spines that may be embedded in the pad itself. I then give the pad a quick rinse to ensure no spines remain. The pad is then thinly sliced with the stone blade. It can be eaten raw. Kind of slimy and sour, but not bad. It's a lot better than starving to death. Though I prefer to cook my prickly pear with chopped meat and tomatoes. A pan with a little olive oil or butter is all that's needed. Cook the sliced pads for several minutes until they lose their bright green color. At the end, I add some salsa and cook for about two more minutes. Then I plate the meal. Within minutes of being picked, I have a delicious, healthy, low-fat lunch that's based on the archaeology of the prehistoric people who once called this region of Texas their home.